11th graders. Today, we're going to talk about schools and what schools should look like. This is an exciting topic for all of you because you go to school every day except when you are on vacation. And of course, most of you want schools to be appealing, to be exciting places for you to develop, find friends, and learn many useful things that you're going to need in your real life. So in this video lesson, we are going to learn about the first formal schools, some unusual schools around the world, and different approaches to what education should look like. At the end of the lesson, we're going to practice idioms related to learning in general, useful words in real context, and grammar. We're going to talk about models in the past. Are you ready? The first formal education began shortly after the development of writing, which is 3000 before Christ. Yes, that's a lot of time ago. When both the Sumerians, who have developed the pictographics, uh, and the Egyptians, who developed hierographics, established schools to teach students to read and write the system. So as soon as we had a writing system in place, schools were invented so that people could learn how to use them. After the development of the first alphabet, which is between 1800 and uh, 1000 before Christ, the Semitic people in Syria, religious schools were set up. Priests taught privileged boys to read sacred, which means saint, Hebrew writing. So religious schools were the second category to be created. The first school that was open to everyone, not just for the upper classes, may well have been that established by the Chinese philosopher Confucius in 1551, 479 before Christ. He taught literature and music, con conduct and ethics to anyone who wanted to learn. Isn't that exciting to have Confucius as your teacher? The Western modern education is based on the ancient Greek schools, which were founded about the 5th century before Christ. In the city-state of Sparta that you're all familiar with, boys were not only trained for the military, they also learned reading and writing and studied music. In Athens, boys learned to read and write, memorize poetry, and learn music as well as trained in athletics. So not just the body, but the mind also had to be trained. In the second half of the 5th century, the Sophists, the ancient Greek teachers of rhetoric and philosophy, schooled young men in the social and political arts, hoping to mold them into ideal statesmen. Everyone wanted people to be perfect, so that was the first um, aim of any school. Now, what are the keywords that we need to memorize? Formal, formal education from a school means official, conventional, traditional, or serious. Sacred writings, these are declared holy, saint, worthy of religious veneration. So the Bible is an example of a text that is sacred. Rhetoric, it's skill in using language effectively and persuasively. I hope that our video lessons will help you have a better rhetoric in English, which means to be able to express yourselves more persuasively in English and to mold. The schools in Sparta wanted to mold the young generation, which means to guide, to form, to give a certain shape to the students. Now, we all take school for granted, and many times we complain about school, and we want schools to be more colorful, more exciting, we want more technology to be available in schools. So it is true that according to the Constitution, all children have the right to a free public education. The Constitution requires that all children be given equal educational opportunity no matter their race, ethnic, background, religion, gender, or whether they are rich or poor, citizens or no citizens. But, my dear 11th graders, not all the schools around the globe are exciting places to be in, and not all children have the same conditions that you do. Let's have a look at these three examples. This is a Bangladesh boat school. Yes, boat school. Bangladesh has limited natural resources and is strongly impacted by climate change. This makes it very difficult for children to access regular education. But the people in some parts of Bangladesh have learned to work with what they have to do by delivering classes to children on boats. This innovative way of learning means children from isolated waterside communities can have access to libraries and other learning facilities. Another example, these children are on a train platform 
And so this is an example of the train platform school. The platform schools across India help marginalized children get an education. Classes take place at train stops and help students who don't have access to schooling due to financial constraints. So far, these schools have offered education to over 4,000 children in India. Think about that. Would you be able to study on a train platform? Because over 4,000 children in India from very poor regions, from very poor families are doing that every day. Now, in the picture, you can see a cave. And this is an example of a cave school. This Chinese elementary cave school is situated beneath a rock and is believed to be the only cave school in the world. With six classes and 200 students, the unique school offers children from remote villages a chance of an education. Water and food shortages due to desertification and drought mean learning is essential for children hoping to improve their lives. Another question for you, would you be able to study in a cave? What are the words that we need to remember from these three examples? To deliver classes means to offer, to present, to give. Facilities, building room equipment, number of such things designed to serve as a particular function. And as you may guess, in caves, on boats and on train platforms, there are not many facilities available. Marginalized. So all these schools are for marginalized children, which means for children who have positions of low or limited importance, influence or power. Usually these are children from socially or economically vulnerable families. And constraints. A constraint is a restriction or a limitation. So whenever these children are limited in their options and they cannot go to traditional schools, fortunately, there are still this type of schools, key schools, boat schools, or train platform schools that can still deliver the knowledge to the students interested in studying. On the other side of these options, we have a lot of modern schools. For example, welcome to the School of Future created by Microsoft. This is the school where many future pioneers in the field of technology will soon be graduating from. The Microsoft Design School of the Future in Philadelphia, USA, accommodates students from diverse backgrounds. Those who are selected needn't worry about books as learning at the school is completely digital. Teachers use computerized smart boards instead of traditional blackboards. Well, I'm sure that uh, would definitely be a place you would like to study in. No books, everything is uh, computerized. Now have a look at this colorful school that attracted my attention. Vitra schools. There are 30 Vitra schools in Sweden. And in these schools, there are no walls, no separate classrooms or classes. Instead, students are taught in groups according to level, based on the school's pedagogical principles. The water wing hall, the cave, the campfire, the laboratory. These are didactic or pedagogical approaches that create different types of learning and teach uh, different situations. In Vitra, they do not believe in regular classes and the school's organization's vision is to create an every day for the individual students where individual development, living cultural work and challenging learning environments are most important. Mm -hmm. How about this one? I'm sure primary students are totally excited about this model of school and have a look at this amazing colors and this amazing furniture. Now, the Oristad Gymnasium in Denmark, it looks more like a museum to me, is one of giant classrooms. Again, there are no separate walls, where 358 high school students learn in an expansive glass cube. By encouraging students to collaborate in wide open settings, the school hopes kids will be equipped to think flexibly on diverse topics later in life. The open spaces created in the shape of spacious drums Often more relaxed learning environment because you're sitting comfortably uh, in a beanbag probably. And they encourage students to assume an active role in their own education. Kids break off into groups and form makeshift, and we studied makeshift, makeshift, which means adjustable classrooms, sometimes with teachers to guide them. Mm, how about this model? Let's have a look at the key vocabulary. So this School accommodates 200 students, which means offers space, room, or other conditions for living with specific activities. Expansive, 
right? This system of schools is expansive, which means capable of expanding, tending to expand, make bigger, which means the number is growing. Remote for re children from remote areas. Remote means distant, far away, outside. And because of drought, students don't have access to traditional schools. Drought is a long period of abnormally low rainfall, especially one that adversely affects growing or living conditions. Okay, drought, pay attention to the pronunciation. All right, and now I put together a list of amazing idioms related to learning, and I hope that you're going to not just enjoy them, but use them next time when you discuss about your studying experience. Don't go near the water until you learn how to swim, which means don't attempt to do something that you're not prepared for. For example, I told them I shouldn't be the one to do it. I'm just not qualified to make that kind of work. That's good. Don't go near the water until you learn how to swim. So don't try to do something until you're sure you're good at it. Learn something from the bottom up. After working at this company for nearly 30 years, I've learned it from the bottom up, which means you learn or become knowledgeable about every or nearly every aspect of something. Okay. Have you learned anything from bottom up? Learn the ropes. This class is intense. They don't even give you a chance to learn the ropes before they throw an exam at you. So learn the ropes means learn or understand the basic details of how to do or perform a job, a task or activity. Hmm. Right? When hell freezes and the devil learns to skate. Uh, Bob, our family will give up control of this company to you when hell freezes over and the devil learns to ice skate. As you can see, this is a, not a very probable scenario. So when hell freezes and the devil learns to skate, means never, at no time, under no circumstances, okay? So if you want to say that will never happen, you say, oh, that will happen when hell freezes and the devil learns to skate, which is a fun expression. Learn the hard way. I use this expression a lot. Start it, starting your own business is really tough. I had to learn that the hard way. It means learn something through personal experience, especially which is difficult, painful, or unpleasant. So, my dear 11th graders, listen to what your teachers say, because you don't want to learn everything the hard way. You should also learn things nicely, the good way, or the easy way. All right, um, and now let's talk about grammar a bit. At the beginning of the lesson, we talked about the first formal schools, and we said the first formal education could have begun shortly after the development of writing in ancient Egypt. So we're not sure, of course, because there's a lot of time that passed ever since, but we can say the formal education could have begun, begin, begin, begun, the third form. After the development of the first alphabet, religious schools were set up. Priests must have been the ones who taught privileged boys to read sacred Hebrew writings. So again, we don't know for sure, but based on the documents that are available, Priests might, must have been the ones. We believe that they were the ones. We are confident they were the ones. And the first school that was open to everyone may well have been that established by Chinese philosopher Confucius. Again, we don't know for sure, but based again on documentation and research, that may well have been established by, all right? So in all these situations, could have begun must have been, may well have been, we guess. We don't know for sure, we guess, but we are very confident about our guess. So we're going to talk about models in the past. These are pretty tricky, but if you learn the structure, you will be able to use them correctly. So whenever you have a model verb, would have, could have, may have, might have, should have, must have, which is a model in the past, all right? Uh, you use the third form of the verb, for example, he could have taken the flight, which is a possibility. He's not here, he could have taken the flight. Or, we may have passed the math exams, but it was in Spanish, right? So we don't know, we may have passed. You might have sold the car if you really needed the money. So, okay, might have sold if you wanted money. You should have listened to the teacher, but you didn't. That's too bad and too late. So you should have listened to it to the teacher in the past. You, we must have been crazy if we did that. Oh my God, it's unbelievable. So we're not crazy, but we must have been crazy in the past. In the first example I skipped, if I had guessed the future, I would have taken some precautions against what would happen. 
So I didn't know, but if I knew, I would have taken, okay? So dear students, in order to use models in the past correctly, you have to use a model, have, and then the third part of the verb, taken, would have taken, would have taken the flight, past, may have passed, sold, might have sold, listen, listened, should have listened, and be, be, must have been crazy. So model, have, and the third part of the verb, or the past participle, as we call it. Let's practice to see if you understood the rule. An earthquake? That terrifying. Can you make it into a sentence that uses a modal verb? In the past, by the way. That must have been terrifying, okay? Must have and the past participle, right? Because it happened in the... We think in the past it was terrible. Must have been terrifying. We don't know for sure that Alex broke the coffee table. We don't know. Might be he, might be not. How do you say that in English? It might be the dog. It might have been the dog. Might the model have and the third part of the verb, the past participle. How did she fail that exam? I'm surprised. Cannot and study. So this time we add a modal verb in the negative form. So she can't have studied very much. All right. Can't have studied. Modal negative have and the third form of the verb, the past participle. I thought I saw Adnan this morning, but it him. He's in Greece this week, so it's not possible to see him. So could be, all right. In the negative form, we say, I thought I saw Adnan this morning, but it couldn't have been him because he's in Greece this week. Couldn't, modal negative form, have past participle, be. So, my dear students, a good education is a foundation for a better future. It doesn't matter if you go to a beautiful modern high-tech school or to a regular traditional school. It doesn't matter if your school is equipped with the most cutting-edge technology or it's just a school, an old building. What matters is the quality of the studies that you get when you go to school. And don't forget that a good education is a foundation for a better future. So I hope going to school is not just a simple fun activity, but it's also an activity that is going to bring you various rewards in your future life. So treasure your school, value the effort of your teachers, be a good, diligent student, and in the future, you will definitely be rewarded for all your efforts. Thank you for watching this video lesson. Stay tuned for more interesting, exciting video lessons placed in our digital library. All the best.